Hello guys, it's me and Stable Voltage and welcome to episode 6 of Xenonauts. Somebody pointed out to me uh, after watching the last video that um, because I realised that for some reason I could only name people who were assigned to the Sky Ranger, uh, well not the Sky Ranger, the, uh, the dropship uh, Charlie 1, uh, there is actually a little button down here in the bottom left hand corner that allows you to switch between your various different dropships and those people who are unassigned, which is brilliant. So Spencer Manson has now been added to the right. Uh, one thing I also missed before is going on to equipment here. We could see the grenades, but we've also got obviously rockets for the rocket launcher uh, and medipacks, uh, demo charges, and um, shields which we can use. Uh, combat shields could be very, very useful. Not something that I'm interested. Maybe at some point we'll try one out the combat shield and a pistol or something like that. It might be worth a few people having demo charges if they can carry them. That would be uh, actually quite nice. Um, they're not all that much more heavy. Let's just go into set this equipment as default. So now, hopefully, if we just go through all of our riflemen... Those are the unassigned ones. If we now go through the assigned ones. So it shouldn't affect people too badly. But all of our riflemen should now be carrying grenades. And demo charges. I guess we could probably also get away with doing it on the assault guys as well. So let's go and do that. We'll set that equipment as default. And we'll just go through our assault guys. We've only got a couple of them. Okay, they are all done. Now, heavy weapons. Do we want to give you one or is that going to be a little too heavy for you? No, you can take one. That is fine. What about ammunition? Can you take another mag? No, that does put you slightly over. Okay, fair enough. Probably... Now, there was some argument as to whether it's better to go for having... Someone with an LMG, which is primar primarily for suppression, or going for uh, someone with the rocket launcher. So far, I actually haven't encountered any enemy... Uh, what's the word? I haven't encountered any uh, enemy resistance with vehicles or anything that requires the rocket launcher. So we're going to leave that for the time being. Uh, we do now have... James, our rifleman, who is injured, who we could take out and swap with somebody else for the time being, which we probably will do. So we're going to unassign you, and we will put Spencer Manson on board for this journey. I really need to learn to click on the right places for this game. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Hopefully it won't be too long before uh, we do get some people back into the fight as well. But let's get back to... Let's just have a quick look at the base, actually, before we do anything else. We are five days away from a missile battery and eight days away from another laboratory, which means we'll be able to get some more scientists in. So let us get ourselves back onto the Geoscape. And we'll hit the speed up button and see what happens. Obviously, we've got a few things going on. I don't know why I'm always so reluctant to hit the fastest speed. It does actually pause the game when it comes up with a warning. Several days passing without an awful lot happening, but our scientists have now managed to research the alien plasma rifle. The alien plasma rifle is a two-handed alien infantry weapon approximately 30 inches in length and 3 kilograms in weight. It is vastly more capable combat weapon than the alien plasma pistol, generating a plasma bolt that is significantly more powerful and cohesive than its smaller cousin. Without the space constraints of the plasma pistol, the aliens have mounted a more substantial generation array inside the weapon's barrel. This gives it a similar operational range to most ballistic assault rifles, but far higher damage and armor penetration potential. Laboratory tests suggest jackal combat armor may do just enough to allow the wearer to survive a direct hit, but unarmed troops were likely to be killed instantly. Indeed, we believe this weapon is even a credible threat to our Hunter armoured cars. It would appear that the versatility of the alien plasma rifle makes it the default armament for alien combatants. It is powerful, light, accurate and capable of burst fire. In short, vastly superior to anything we possess. So it does mention here uh, a type of armour, jackal armour, that it would be... Um, that would be good against it. Does that mean we can do that? Let's go to the research screen. We can research improved 
Combat armor. Project to develop improved infantry armor for our soldiers, making them more likely to survive hits from alien weapons. I think we definitely need to do that. All of our cancels... Uh, cancels? Because uh, so, I'm reading one thing and doing something else. All of our scientists are on that project, and it already says that the progress is excellent, so we will go ahead with that. So let's go back to speeding things up. UFO is detected. It is a small UFO. It's only traveling at 1400 kilometers per hour, which means it is one of the small ones. So we will go ahead and intercept that. Again, we can probably quite safely just send a single one of our condors out to it. So that's exactly what we're going to do. It means we'll be in a bit of a safer spot if we get a, another alien uh, ship pop up. I'm going to auto resolve just because it's 100% victory and I didn't take any damage. The AI seems to do a much better job of dealing with that than I do. The interceptor is going to return to base. Now, the question is, what do we do here? Do we airstrike this one or do we go to the crash site? Um, we could uh, we could airstrike it for $1,500 or we could actually go and land. And I'm not really sure what is the best option to do with it at the moment. It would be nice to deal with some slightly more difficult uh, alien encounters. Uh, we'll see if anything else pops up. Construction of the missile battery is completed. Okay, I'm good with that. We've got another UFO detected. Again, it is one of the uh, smaller ones. So we're going to center on that one. We are once again going to attempt to intercept it. We'll use Condor 2 because Condor 1 is still refueling and rearming. Not sure where we're actually going to land on this one. We may indeed get it over the sea. Now, I think what I'm actually going to do here... Right, it's, lo it's low on fuel and it's returning to base. There's not an awful lot I can do about that one. I am going to send my dropship to this crash site because it will now be a day mission. I would like to try and deal with this, but the problem is it is just too far away. We will attempt to send out another interceptor. There is a possibility that we can get it with Condor 3 if it starts coming back towards us. The other possibility, of course, is that it lands. But, yeah, it's moving quite outside. Oh, it is coming back towards us. We may just get it if we're lucky. Okay, what we're going to do, we don't want to tail it because we're going to be... We've only got 56 seconds of combat fuel left. We're going to auto-resolve. We managed to take it out. We're returning to base. It's been shot down over the water, but it has been dealt with. So, we are going to engage into what is our... Is this uh, our sixth mission? It's our fifth crash site, but remember one of the sites we did was a landing site, so this will be the fifth crash site. Again, not expecting anything too different from the ones we have had previously, but I'm using this as an opportunity to get to learn what I'm doing a little bit and also at the same time to actually get some of the troops leveled up because there's nothing worse than actually having somebody who's injured and having to get them to sit, uh, sit a particular fight out. Uh, I'm not sure why we can't get more people on this dropship. There's plenty of space here in the back. But we are going to have a look around, see what we can see. Okay, looks like we're at the, ed the edge of the map in this direction. We are going to go and check this corner out. Okay, we already see a civilian. Definitely the, the edge of the map here, which is a good thing. So let's take Harry out in this direction. Okay, so this is also the edge of the map. So I think we're going to move you over here, face you in that direction, and you can crouch down. Now, somebody was saying something about crouch. Reading the tooltip, um, command the soldier to crouch or uncrouch at the cost of three time units each. A crouched unit presents a smaller target to the enemy and is 25% harder to hit. Crouching also provides a 25% boost to firing accuracy. Now, that is all something that I already knew because that was in the game manual and in the quick start guide. But one thing that I have been told that I haven't been able to find anywhere, I'm not doubting its validity, I just haven't seen it, is that if you are behind cover and cover is in your way, that if you're actually standing up, you get less of a cover penalty to shoot the alien. Because obviously, I suppose it makes sense, if, you, if you've if you got low cover in your way and you're crouched down, it's going to be blocking your line of sight. But if you're standing up, you'll be able to see over it. Now, I'm not sure how well that works in context. I haven't seen anything yet, but we'll keep an eye on it. If the option comes up to uh, have a look at that, we certainly will. 
let's get you looking in that direction. So you just sit down there, Missy, and see if anything comes from there. Uh, we'll take... Where's our other assault? Peter. Let's see if we can get you up in this direction. See if there's anything around this corner. We found the UFO, which is very nice. No aliens, but at least we've got a good line of sight on the UFO, which is probably a really good place for you to sit there. Although you are assault, so what you should be doing, to be honest, is actually moving forward. What I think I will do is we're going to take... Where are you? We're going to take Bob. I'm going to go around here. Hopefully this building is empty. And it does appear to be. Fantastic. So you're out of time units for the time being, but we're going to put you in front of this window, which puts you in cover and gives you a great line of sight right into the alien ship. And I think that's a fantastic place for you to spend most of this mission, really. Got a few people that haven't moved, so let's just deal with those. We've got um, Dale. Let's get you out over in this direction. Still haven't seen any aliens yet, which is slightly strange. Not leaving myself with a lot of time units for reaction fire either. Uh, Renata, we are going to get you... Hmm, there's not an awful lot of safe places that we can get you at this moment in time. Uh, but we probably do need to start checking out some of these buildings. So, well, that does seem empty, but we'll get you through to some of the other doors at a later time. And we've got one person left who is Stephen with our LMG. Uh, again, it'd be nice to get you somewhere where you could do a useful amount of suppression. So I think we'll, we will come up here and you'll probably end up sitting in this corner once we move our assault soldiers forward. Seems like the most sensible thing. Let's end the turn. You can hear some doors opening and closing. We've got that civilian hopping over a fence. Not really getting anywhere. Okay, good. Well, that was decent enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to get Bob to face in that direction because that is much more useful. We are going to run you over here, because there may still be stuff hanging around these rocks and things. Um, in fact, I think we're going to go in this direction and actually check. Looks fine. So, we're not going to move, we're just going to turn and crouch. You can move forwards just one for, the, for better cover, and crouch down again. And now we need to start exploring the area a little. So what we're going to do is we will nudge you forwards... We can have a quick look in here, and it is clear. Okay, it's probably as far as uh, we're going to get Spencer to move there. Harry, you are going to now move up into cover. In fact, you can move here and you'll still be in cover. You are fine. Missy, let's get you over here another seemingly empty building let's crouch very very worried that we haven't spotted any aliens yet of course there are lots of buildings with roofs that they could be on so we do have to be careful here so we're going to get you to go through and open this door we already know that this room is empty, but you're going to go upstairs later and see what you can see up there. Could be dangerous. You're going to stay there. That's absolutely fine. You're staying there on Overwatch. Everybody else, I think, is almost in position, except Dale. Can we get you somewhere that's particularly safe? Let's just actually get you up around the side of this building. Just so you're a little bit closer. You are facing the UFO, which is a good position. Uh, you have time units left, which is fine. You have time units left, which is fine. Okay, next turn. Again, we hear some doors, and they must have been on a first floor, because we actually keep seeing the cameras flicking between the various different levels, which is interesting. So we're going to take Peter, move him around to the side of the UFO, and face in. You can crouch down there. You are ready to... Um, Deal with anything that might come at you from that direction. Let us move Missy Kiwi forwards a little. This corner's probably going to be safe. Now, of course, we do have these stairs here on the outside of the building, and they are right next to the UFO, so that would be an ideal place for the aliens to try and get into. We certainly need to try and check that out. Let us attempt to get um, Renata upstairs. I've never gone upstairs before in this game, so this is a new experience. We do have a civilian with a gun. 
which is fine. Let's see if we can get over and open this door. Not on this turn, of course. Who else can move Spencer? We do need to go out here a little bit and start looking for some of these aliens. I'm sure they, there must be some around. Because the map is quite extensive in this direction. I'm going to duck you there because I don't want to uncover something and then find out you don't have enough time units left to deal with it. That could be quite embarrassing. Um, Harry, we are going to try and get you over to the other side of the UFO. Still haven't spotted any aliens yet. Doesn't mean there aren't any around. We do need some better cover up in this direction. Which is probably what Dale is going to do. You're not going to have a lot of uh, time units remaining once we get you up here, but let's crouch you down, and you're just there to give us line of sight. Looks like that could be the back end of the map, but we will have to double check. Uh, everybody else is in the position that I'd like them to be in. Are you crouched? Yes, you are. It just doesn't look like you are. Um, can anybody else realistically move? It's only you that has the time units left, and you're just sitting there to guard. And you. Okay, fine. Next turn. No point taking unnecessary risks at this point. Still expecting the possibility of um, three or four aliens. Seemingly, they, they could all be in the ship. I mean, it, it is a possibility. Absolutely astounded that we uh, haven't, uh, haven't found any yet. Let's get Missy to have a quick look upstairs here. We have spotted an alien. In a building. Building that's quite a distance away. At least we know where you are. So we could bring you over here. Obviously you don't have a line of sight on it. I didn't expect you to, but you... You are potentially in a position to deal with it. Now, who does... It's in... Which building is it? It's in that building over there. I'd like to get you out onto this roof. If we can get you over here. And you'll potentially be able to deal with it if it comes out. Not on this turn, because you no, no longer have the time units. You can see. Now, obviously, you're not going to be able to hit it because you have a shotgun. So, we're just going to get you to crouch down. Let's make sure we get on the right level so we don't accidentally start clicking in the wrong places. Who has movement left? You're going to stay there for the time being. You're going to stay there. You're going to stay there. You're going to stay there. Let's let the aliens have their move. We know where he is. He could come out and shoot at us, which he probably will. Oh, this is bad. Well, we did get we did get one reaction. But we didn't hit him, sadly. We can hear fire. That could be a civilian, though, because it obviously wasn't an alien weapon. We heard the sound. I'm a little bit worried now that he's going to be able to do some damage to us here. What line of sight? You still have a shotgun, which is really bad. Now we could take shots with uh, with Spencer here. We don't have an awful lot of cover. And he's only got a 61% chance to hit, even. Sort of at point blank range. But let's see what we can do. And we actually missed. Didn't suffer reaction fire. We can have a snapshot. We did hit. We take retaliation fire. Isn't enough to kill us. Now we've only got two time units left. Which means we can't actually move. So we do have ourselves a little bit of a problem here. Do we have anyone who is close enough by. To be able to take a shot. Uh, you're not going to be able to reach him from there. You're going to have major line of sight issues. Um, can we get you anywhere at all where you could potentially see him? Not in good time. This very well could be um, Spencer's first and last mission here. This would also mean our first lost uh, troop. Now, I'm not entirely sure. This is a little bit risky. We're going to try it. We're going to have a look and see if Bob has a line of sight on him. He actually does, even though he's blocked by the wall slightly. But we do have a 66% chance for a shot, so... Hit and kill. 
Well done, Bob. You have just saved Spencer Manson from almost certain death. Good work, sir. Um, let us have a look with Dale, because I still expect there are going to be more aliens around that we just haven't found yet. Okay, well, you seem fairly safe in there for the time being. You're in a good spot. You were in a good spot and no longer are, so you might as well come back to there as soon as you can. Let's just use you to have a look around a little more. After all, it was you that actually discovered that last alien. And we have discovered another one. You see, I knew that there were going to be more of them around. I bet you can't hit him, even though you do have a height advantage. Um, yeah, you are being blocked by a lot of junk in the way, but we do know where he is at least, so... Um, yeah, okay, let's end the turn, see what happens. Yeah, right, you've got out of line of sight, but at least you're not behind the cover anymore, so if I can get into a slightly better position, may actually be able to hit you from there. If we move forwards one, yes, we can now see you. We still have a shotgun, which is problematic. I only have a 4% chance to hit because of the range. Certainly not going to be able to hit you with the shotgun either. That's the major problem here. So I think what we need to do is consider getting back down. Actually, no, we're going to keep you here just for line of sight at the moment. Uh, I severely doubt you're going to be able to get a grenade anywhere near that distance. Close, but not close enough. Obviously, we've got um, Spencer here, who still has to be careful, because there could still be more aliens hiding over in this direction that we just haven't seen yet. I think we're good. Can you see him? No, you've got a... If that door was open, potentially be alright. But from that position, you do not have a shot. So we're going to put you back guarding the UFO. And face the right direction and crouch down. I think what I am actually going to do here is move Harry up to this position. Because Harry has a better rifle. Now you'll have line of sight. So Missy, you can come down and deal with the UFO. You are one of our assault troops, so you are better equipped for this kind of thing. And let us put you back on crouch. Now, we actually have two aliens. We've got one inside a building. So you can see him through a window. You can't hit him from there. At least we know where he is. Let us end the turn and see what's going to happen. So we still don't know if we've got any inside the UFO, though we very, very well could have. We've still got civilians running around. Okay, now he's ran over there, but you may have a shot may well have a shot 48 percent accuracy let's take the shot that was terrible uh we can have a snapshot to 30 percent it was a hit not a kill certainly wounded it though uh, we can't see that other alien now let's just go with one we know it is in this building here we are to a degree yeah you can't see you don't have a line of sight on that either do you no not at all so we need to get you over to this building quickly and safely. Two things that don't often go well together. We can see it from there, actually. 0% chance to hit. Um, how good are you with the grenade? What's your throwing arm like? Can't throw grenades over multi-levels. That seems weird. You should think, you know, you can throw a grenade onto that roof. Okay, so what we'll do is we will actually go down one and we'll move you over here where you should be a little safer and crouch you down. Still worried about something coming from this building. We've got you up there and we've got right. Okay, they, those are the two aliens that we know about. You can still see him. You actually might be in with a chance if you go over here and you've got an 83% chance to hit. A hit but no kill. You're not going to get a second shot, Dale, unfortunately. But um, 
that should put it very, very low on health. Uh, nobody else can really see it from there. If we move you over to this window... No, you are very, very much blocked. Although we could take a, a forced shot anyway. There's always a possibility that you could actually damage some of the cover, but probably not with this particular weapon. So you're not in a great spot. Let's end the turn. Hopefully we survive. He's still running around, but we know he's in there. He's actually healing up and he's gone behind the wall, which is problematic somewhat. Now, what was that that just went in down there? Was that was that another alien that just went in down downstairs below us? Or was that this guy? I really don't know at this point. Going to put you over here and crouch you down. These aliens are getting really clever now. We can see an alien still, which is you. You don't have a line of sight on him, sadly. You do, however, have nades. I'm just worried that the wall is going to uh, absorb the blast. But worst case scenario, we do take out the cover. So you can duck down. Right, now which door do we try and take you in? Oh, hello. 63% um, chance to hit. Let's duck. Yeah, now we've only got a chance for a snapshot. A hit, but not a kill. We can't actually get away, but we can shut the door. Still could be the end of you, I'm afraid. You can't do anything yet because that grenade hasn't gone off, which is a bit of a shame. You do have a 100% block there. We know where that alien is, but you can't hit him. We are going to have to look inside the UFO at some point. There goes the grenade. He's opened the door. Oh dear, there we go. Spencer has actually died. My first loss, though, in um, in six missions. Taking some reaction fire at the alien and missing. Looks like that may well have just been a civilian that was down there. Okay, so. We have lost ourselves a soldier. We can also no longer see where that other alien is, which is annoying. Okay, let's get you downstairs and start dealing with some of these issues. You're going to go there. We need to get somebody over to deal with our fallen comrade. I feel a little bit bad when I add someone to the game and they die on their very first mission, but that seems to be the way of things with XCOM a lot of the time. Um... I'm going to take you downstairs because I just don't think you're, you're going to be running around between, backwards and forwards between windows trying to get a shot on somebody and you're not going to manage it. It's probably time to actually have a look inside the UFO. We don't know how many are in there. We'll do that on the next turn because remember, we can always win the mission by just putting somebody inside the UFO for five turns once we Ah, that's where he was. Well, reaction fire destroyed him for us. We haven't seen or had any hint of alien activity within the UFO. So, as far as we know, there's only one alien on the map that we are still aware of. Which is the one that is over here. I'm going to try and get a little bit closer. Got to be careful. We are going to open the UFO. We've actually got two in here, because that's a dead one. Um, we do have quite a few blocked shots. You do have a 39% chance of hitting that one. Hit but no kill. Let's try again. Okay, one of them is dead. Uh, Bob, what's your line of sight on that one? None at all because you're going to end up hitting your own guy. Uh, we can take a 18% chance to hit. Uh, we didn't get the hit, but we did actually get a suppression. Well, I think we did hit, actually. Let's try again. Let's have another shot. No, we did miss, but he is suppressed, so no reaction fire this time around. Is it worth trying to get Bob into a slightly better place? It is. It's dangerous, but it's probably worth it. So face that way and crouch. You won't get a shot on this turn. 
but that is as good as we can do. We're going to start moving you forward to deal with that other alien, and we have found him. Now, you can shoot through that window. It is blocking your shot, but you do have a 33% chance with an aimed shot. Yeah, it was pretty terrible. Uh, you now can't hit him at all. So let's move up behind. Oh, no, he's taking a reaction shot. He missed as well. That's it, fella. You keep missing. And I'm going to go down here and crouch. So we can still see him. Now, even though we can't actually hit him... You see, we're still only taking a 50% block. Even though something here is blocking us, you only take the highest block penalty. So we've got a 45% chance of a block here. We've got a 50% chance of a block here at the window. So the, only the highest one is counted, the 50%. Didn't see what that block chance was before uh, I actually ducked behind it. But I, I can only assume it's the same. Okay, do we have anybody else over in this direction who has the potential to shoot you? Yes, we have you. Oh, you've, you've already moved on this turn, which doesn't help. Um, nobody else in a particular good location to deal with you. No, okay. Um, what about you, Dale? You've earned yourself a kill. Let's get back round here. Don't have a lot of time units. Now, Dale is one of the guys we haven't renamed, so he may become the new uh, Spencer uh, Manson, just to put him back in. Because I do feel a little bad about that. Okay, so that alien has disappeared again. Which is not good. Oh, no, we found him. Face, crouch, cross everything. 95% chance to hit. A hit but no kill. Return fire. We've taken a hit. That was quite nasty. Um, if we don't kill this guy soon, we could very well have a dead soldier on our hands again. 41% chance to hit. 27 time units. We can afford to duck. Fire. And we missed. And annoyingly, I've actually moved Bob out of the way now. Who's this? Ah, this is this is one of our uh, also unknown people. So not the end of the world if we uh, if we lose an unknown. Although we we want to avoid losing soldiers, of course we do. Um, let's open up the door to the UFO. We've still got this guy here. Question is, can we take him? Out? Let's have a go. Right, we missed the shot, but we suppressed. Let's take another shot and see if we can hit him. We do not, but he is suppressed. Now, that means he can't reaction fire, so we can run right into his face. Get a little bit closer. We can crouch. Is it going to help? 69% chance, 87% chance to hit. There we go. You are dead. That now means that Bob doesn't have to worry anymore about dealing with you. So, if we can get Bob down here quick enough... He's got enough for one snapshot. 44% chance to hit. A hit and a kill. Bob, you are saving your comrades left, right and centre. Why Bob didn't get a promotion on that round for actually saving two people, I have no idea. We did unfortunately lose Spencer Manson, but I think uh, Dale Phillips may become the new Spencer Manson, just because I feel a little bit bad about losing somebody on the very first mission. And we do have another injury. Luckily, we do have some spare troops. So that is our first casualty. It was still good, not excellent, but still still good and we got a fair bit back from doing that we also shot that other ufo down over the water which was fine everybody has returned to base so let's go back and look at our personnel we are going to find dale phillips we're going to rename soldier and you are going to be the new spencer manson i still keep hitting um shift to type the names even though everything's in block capitals and I'm not sure why I do that. Uh, let's just have a quick look at the roster now because we do have a few people who are now injured and out. I think it's probably time to put... Um, well, you, Garrett's 98%. I think we might just wait a little while on that. Let's just speed things up a little bit. Don't know how long it's going to take him to... Uh, fully recover let's just check now do we get a notice 
Um, apparently we don't because he's at 100% health. So you are going back on to Charlie 1. Okay, so Charlie 1 is now fully assigned. We have everybody on board who we can. Probably not going to run another mission, so let's just have a quick look and see what we've got. We're working on the improved combat armor. Still no real sort of indicator as to how long that is going to take. We've got our missile defenses, which is going to be really good. Three more days until we get the additional lab space. Uh, how much space does a lab give us? Uh, capacity of 15. How much space do we have in... Right, we've still got another 29 spaces left. So we could hire 15 scientists if it will let us. Uh, let us just have a look. Science, hire scientists. Um... No, strangely enough, it actually won't let us hire the scientists. It's a little bit strange. You would think, at the very least, it would allow us to hire them, even if we can't put them to work. Uh, I'm struggling to remember now, but I had a feeling that that's how it worked in the original XCOM. So you can actually hire staff, such as engineers and scientists. Even if you didn't have the space to put them to work, you could still, as long as you had uh, living quarters for them, you could still hire them. It would be nice to have been able to hire these guys so they were already here when the construction of the lab is complete. As it stands now, I've got to wait for the lab to build, then I've got to hire the scientists and wait another couple of days for these guys to turn up. So that is a little bit disappointing. All of my interceptors and dropship and everything is at full, uh, full capacity. This is something that I had not noticed before. Something I should have checked on that I can actually look at my dropships and you can actually assign whereabouts people will start. That could actually be very, very useful. So Garrett's our sniper, for example. So what we should do is we should have two people with ballistic rifles guarding the back doors. Can't put them on the actual ramps. And then we should probably have the two shotguns either side at the front with a rifle in the middle. And then we can have the two snipers either side supported with the machine gun. So this is really good. We can actually uh, assign exactly where our people are going to start on the mission. So we're going to have two riflemen who can check the side entrances. I mean, it saves them a movement of two spaces, really. And, you know, that that is worth it. It also means that we've got a rifleman and two shotguns right at the front door. And we've also got our two snipers who are protected. I'm quite happy with that. I'm glad I found that. It's always worth clicking on these things. You never know what you are going to find as you go through these things stores it's mainly just alien alloys so don't need to really worry about anything there workshop we're not currently building anything we could build another aircraft do we actually have a spare hangar no we don't have a spare hangar so we couldn't build an aircraft even if we wanted to so that is pretty much all we can do so it's a good place to end the video and then hopefully next time we'll start getting some slightly different uh, ufo encounters but this is my first playthrough as i said it is blind so i really don't know uh, how fast it progresses, I don't really know what to expect, but I'm enjoying the process of uh, discovery and, and finding out, and uh, I'm still having a lot of fun with it. So, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Until then, goodbye for now.